Hi, this video is all about calorimetry, which sounds really fancy. And there are a couple moving parts. I want to kind of introduce you to calorimetry here, but there is one kind of major equation that we will use as part of a calorimetry uh, calculation. So first, let's just define calorimetry. Calorimetry is just simply measuring heat change in a system. And a system is usually a reaction, uh, but a system is really whatever we define it to be. We could say that the system is this calculator. As I heat up or cool down this calculator, I can do some calculations about what's going on. Uh, the system could be Earth. Uh, so the system is really what we define it to be. And in many cases in chemistry, that's just simply the reaction. Now in calorimetry, we use this kind of famous equation. You may have seen this in middle school science. You may have seen it in physics, introductory physics, but Q equals MC delta T. And we're going to get back to this a little bit later, but let me first just focus on Q. Q is heat, which is different from temperature. Temperature measures the speed of particles. Heat is a form of energy. Um, and so Q as heat is often expressed in units of calories. Now, what's a calorie? Well, a calorie is just simply the amount of heat that you need to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius or by one Kelvin. And uh, let me kind of visually show you this. If I have a gram of water, now I'm talking pure water, distilled H2O, and I add some heat to that, the amount of heat that it takes to raise the temperature of that gram of water by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin is equivalent to a calorie. So in this animation, I've added a calorie of heat, and that's what got this gram of water to uh, increase in temperature by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Now I want to pause for a second and just point this out. We can use Celsius or Kelvin for this because the increments between Celsius and Kelvin temperatures are identical. Don't believe me? Uh, take zero degrees Celsius and one degree Celsius. If I was going from zero to one degree Celsius, that's a difference of one. If I were to convert zero degrees Celsius into Kelvins, that would be uh, 273 Kelvins, and one degree in, uh, Celsius in Kelvins is 274 Kelvins. The difference here is also one. So that's why it does not matter that we are talking about degrees Celsius or Kelvins because a change between two is the same uh, absolute value. Okay, so let's head back to Q. We can measure Q in calories, but sometimes kilocalories are used, and that's just simply a thousand of these calories here. Uh, if you look at a nutrition facts label here in the United States, and you see calories here, it's actually not referring to this type of calorie here, it's referring to kilocalories. So this is actually 230,000 of these calories here. Uh, we've just over time used kilocalorie and in place have just popped in calories. It's terrible practice, um, but that's, that's what's happened in the United States. So if you see something that's got calories on it, uh, it's actually kilocalories, just so you know that. Now, there is one more unit that's used, and this is used in the metric system, and therefore in chemistry we use this much more than we would use calories or kilocalories, and it is called the joule. 4.18 joules is equivalent to one calorie. And so that's a way to kind of get between calories and joules is just to use this as a conversion factor. And just like for calories, a thousand of those is called the kilocalorie. For joules, a thousand of those is called the kilojoule. And so very often in this class and in chemistry more broadly, you're going to be using joules and kilojoules. And that's abbreviated capital J and then lowercase k capital J for, uh, for the unit on the end of an answer. Okay. So that's Q. Let's head back to Q equals MC delta T. Uh, in this equation, I've got Q very often measured in joules, mass measured in grams. This is called the specific heat capacity. It gets lowercase c, and that's measured in this kind of funky unit, joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, and then delta T is all one thing. Delta here means change in or difference in. That's what delta means. And then T means temperature. So all together, this means the change in temperature. Now, because we could be talking about degrees Celsius or we could be talking about Kelvins, you can actually have a different unit for specific heat. 
And it's just the same thing. These numbers don't change. It's just the units change based on what temperature scale you're using for this uh, temperature calculation. Joules per gram Kelvin, joules per gram degree Celsius, they end up being the same uh, number here. Now, I want to spend some time talking about this little C here. This is called the specific heat. And it's the amount of heat that's needed to raise the temperature of one gram of anything, not just water, but of anything by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. And it's kind of like density in the sense that every substance has its own specific heat, but it varies at different phases of matter. And so a specific heat for liquid water is going to be different from uh, the specific heat of ice, which is solid water. Um, so let's head back to Q equals MC delta T. I want to show you how we get this joules per gram degree Celsius or joules per gram Kelvin unit on C. If I rearrange this equation to solve for just C here, I get this. C is equal to Q over M times delta T. And if I plug in the units for Q, that's J. The unit for M is G, grams, and delta T is degrees Celsius. Well, here's my unit for specific heat, joules per gram degree Celsius, or joules per gram Kelvin. So that's where that unit for specific heat comes from. So let's do some example problems. This says the temperature of 15.0 grams, okay, well that's a mass, of liquid water. Heads up, we need to find the specific heat value for liquid water. Now, this one's very common, um, but if you don't know it, you can pull out our reference table here, table 18. Here's the specific heat of water as a liquid, 4.18. So that's that there, 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then it says it's increased by 3.00 Kelvin. Well, there's T, and that's equivalent to a difference of 3.00 degrees Celsius. So it really does not matter between Celsius and Kelvin for this because we're using delta T. It doesn't matter. So I have everything I need to solve for Q, so I just want to plug in uh, what I know. 15.0 grams is the mass, 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius is the specific heat of liquid water. And then delta T, it says increased by 3.00 degrees Celsius. So then I just calculate at this point, 15 times 4.18 times three. That gives me 188. 188, three significant figures there because I've got three sig figs in all my numbers here. Uh, and then the unit, uh, let's take a look at what the unit would be. Well, grams cancels out because the bottom of this is grams. Uh, degrees Celsius cancels out because the bottom of that is degrees Celsius. And look what we're just left over with, joules. Now, sometimes a problem will say, hey, what's that in kilojoules? And if that's the case, you just want to divide this by 1,000. But in this case, this is good to go, just as 188 joules. So that's like maybe the most basic example of a calorimetry type problem. Let me step it up for our next problem here. This says 355 grams, all right, pause. That's a mass of solid lead. All right, solid lead, that's got a specific heat of 0 0.129. So C is 0 0.129. Is cooled, ooh, cooled from 44 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. So what's the delta T here? Fast way to do this is to take the final temperature and subtract from that final temperature the initial temperature. That'll make anything that's being heated positive and anything that's being cooled, like in this case, negative. So 21 minus 44 is negative 23 uh, degrees Celsius. And then it says calculate the amount of heat lost in kilojoules. All right, let's hang on to the kilojoules part in a second. Let's use Q equals MC delta T here. Mass is 355 grams. Uh, C is 0 0.129 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my delta T is negative 23 degrees Celsius. So uh, let me calculate this. 355 times 0 0.129 times negative 23 gives me negative, negative 1,053. Um, let me just tell, let me just show you what my calculator is giving me. Negative 1,053, which to two significant figures here, I'd want to make this negative 1,100. Now I know that sounds terrible, but it's because this uh, 
temperature reading only has two significant figures in it. So a way to make this more accurate is to get a better thermometer. But negative 1100, uh, and this would be joules because look, grams cancels, degrees Celsius cancels. So now I wanna just get this into kilojoules. And the way to do that is to divide it by a thousand. Let me show you the setup here. Negative 1100, uh, <laughs> negative 1100 joules, bit my tongue there. Uh, if I have a thousand joules on the bottom, uh, one kilojoule on top, that's what's going to tell me I have to uh, divide by a thousand. So negative 1.1 kilojoules is my final answer, and that's calorimetry. Uh, now, I haven't gone through every variation of every problem. Sometimes you're looking for delta T. Sometimes you're looking for M or C. And you just have to rearrange the equation and, and go from there. But that's calorimetry. That's it. Uh, very useful for determining, for example, how much... Uh, heat energy is a certain snack food going to have. Uh, if you're a food chemist and you're designing a new product that's going to be packaged and sent out, uh, you got to put on the back how many calories that snack contains per serving. And so that's just one application. Um, calorimetry is very powerful uh, when it comes to understanding how heat transfers between substances. Thank you.